camera here, I just wanted to share that trick with you that I found on the software program that can easily remove backgrounds from photographic images and can replace it either with a PNG transparency, a solid background, or actually a scene that you can pick up off of the internet. This is something that I was made aware of by my mom who had shared this information with me. And at the time I was utilizing Adobe Photoshop to manipulate my final product pictures. And I felt like it was working pretty good. I felt like it took a little bit of time to get it just right, but it certainly wasn't slowing me down until I tried photo scissors and then I found out that it was slowing me down. So this program is so easy to use and so simple and you can even go ahead and try it without even buying it. So that makes it super convenient. I do want to warn you if you use the free version you will only be able to save a low resolution downloaded picture. So if it is a product that's going to be helpful for your business it may be something you want to consider to purchase going forward. So let's get into the video. All right, so as you can see right here, I have a photograph that I took of a doll um, from a dress that I was making earlier today to turn into a pattern. And this is actually the raw photo of what I took with my Canon Rebel T7 camera. And as you can see uh, up here at the top, she's against a white background but this is actually the wall in the background so obviously I don't want any of that to be in the photograph but I also want to take this doll from uh, two-dimensional where I just see the foreground and the plain background and actually put her into some type of scene so the way that I can do that most efficiently and quickly is to use a software program that is called photo scissors now normally I would do this in Adobe Photoshop and I would uh, take the lasso tool and I would outline the doll and just take my time with uh, the alt key held down and just fully outline her as best I could and then do an inverse of it and then do a transparent background or a uh, solid white background but in this case I want to take the doll out of the foreground and I want to actually put an alternate background in there so that she looks like she's at a holiday party or a holiday hotel. So the way that I'm going to do that is first I'm going to manipulate the picture here in Photoshop as best I can and that would be to either erase any hairs in her face or to make any adjustments if there were threads or something showing on the dress that I didn't want to be shown that I didn't want to be seen. I would correct that in Photoshop and when I have a pretty clear picture of it I'm going to crop the image so that it actually is a smaller size because I don't need all this extra background and and I'm just wanting to get the picture of the doll. So that's the first step that I just crop it. Now I would recommend if you're going to use photo scissors to erase the background that you always try to have as much contrast between the foreground and the background as possible. That way you don't have to do as much uh, manual manipulation of the actual image. So once I have this image I'm just going to save it uh, that far and now that's called uh, Dance JS 1 and I'm going to go to my photo scissors program here and as you can see it's got a pretty simple menu we have the left box which is where I'm going to upload that photograph and then the right box is going to be where that photograph is shown after the background is complete and you can see here there's just a few um, options in the front top menu and right here is the upload button so from there I'm going to go back to that photograph that we saw which was this one JS dance JS one and I'm going to open it up in my program so there's my doll and she's looking pretty decent now because this was such a good contrast between the background and the foreground initially in the photograph you can see it did an excellent job of just picking her right out of that picture now there is just a little bit right here where you can see the shadow so you can either manipulate it here in photo scissors or you can save it and take it back um, to, as a tiff and you can uh, erase that out in Adobe Photoshop or in this case I'm going to actually just utilize these buttons to see if I can get a better uh, picture. So the red means it's not going to be included and I just uh, highlighted that right there. So I'm just going to draw along that shadow that it's picking up and as you see it completely took it out of the picture and that was all the manipulation that I needed in order to make this uh, image seem pretty darn good so if you look over here in the menu what you see is we have the background currently selected which is here this is the foreground which is actually the doll so I can manipulate her size just strictly by uh, shrinking or expanding using the uh, outer parameters of that box but I'm going to go back to the original size 
because I like to put a little bit of shadow on the back of the image because I think it blends better into the actual photograph. And I did see here too that I have a shadow. I hadn't noticed that. So let me go ahead and correct that in this picture as well and see if it will take it off to render. So that also cut it out right there, which is pretty good. And it looks like it actually goes a little bit farther back right there. Perfect. Now, I don't know. If, well, no, I think it looks okay. All right. Uh, we have, unfortunately, you can see we lost her eyeballs, which I think should be included. So I'm going to put that as green. Green is what's included in the image. So we need to actually bring her eyeballs back, which is a good idea. Very creepy. Okay. So there we go. So overall, I think this is an excellent image and I think we're going to be able to go okay with it. So I'm satisfied. So I'm going to go over here and this star button indicates that I'm going to add a shadow. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to enable a shadow. Now you can see that's quite a heavy and dark shadow. So I'm going to adjust the uh, opacity of the shadow just so it's subtle. I want her to blend in with the picture that I've selected for the background but you can make it uh, either not any shadow at all. You can change the direction of the shadow based on what type of background you're putting the photograph in. But anyway, it's really, really super cool. So I'm gonna do that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now from there, you have an opportunity to do a blur radius, which is just to soften around the outside of the image. And again, that's gonna make it look like it's more part of the background. But in this case, I'm not gonna do anything with that because I think it looks pretty decent. Now, here's the interesting part. Once I get to, that's the shadow, and now I'm gonna go back to the background, which right now is picked, picked as translucent. And you have some choices here. So if you're doing photographs for uh, Shopify or Etsy or Amazon, where they recommend a clear white product background, and say you're taking your photographs with a light box and you're getting some type of cast or shadow, this is a perfect way to clean that photograph up and really make your product pop. So I would definitely look into this program if that's something that you're using uh, for your online sales. So right now, like I said, it's in translucent and here are transparent. Here we're going to drop it down and we're going to actually just pick a solid color. So as you can see, the solid color here is white, which is highly recommended for several of those online shopping platforms. I can also change the color using uh, this color grid and I can just pick any old thing and just change it and see how it looks. It really can make a very interesting backdrop. But in this case, since I'm using this actual photograph to sell the dress, and to also have the product photos for the pattern, for what the pattern makes, I wanna actually put it in a holiday background. So I went on Google and I just searched some holiday hotel uh, images and I came up with one that I thought would look really nice with this photograph. So I'm gonna select image from the background and from here I picked, let's see, uh, this, I believe this one. And this is actually a hotel in Louisiana. So quite glamorous and it's in the lobby. So now that I'm in the background, I can actually move the background around until I can actually decide where I want that photograph to be. So as you can see, if you look down here, she could exit out those doors at the end. Um, I could decrease her size, but I have put the shadow on her. So if you are manipulating the foreground and you have added a shadow, you will have to shrink the shadow also. So to make her a little bit more uh, in tune with this scene here, I think that looks pretty nice. I'm also gonna have to pick out her shadow and also reduce that size as well to get it back to where I wanted it to be, or I could eliminate it altogether. So once I have her in place and what looks to be pretty decent, I like it. Good, I think she's really popping in this picture. I think it's very attractive compared to a plain background. And so I'm completely satisfied with that. Once I get it to that degree, I just go over here and I just do the file save. And I'm gonna save that image as a JPEG and it's gonna replace that initial file. So I'm just gonna click there. It's asking me if I wanna replace it. Um, and then I can say what quality level I want it to be saved at. Click okay. And I'm gonna close the program. And I'm gonna actually call up that image again in Photoshop so you can see how much it's changed. Let me see. All right, perfect. So it's asking me if I want the photo to be updated, which I do. Just rendering real quick. And there we go. 
So now that's quite a large image. And what I would do from here is if I was gonna put uh, an Instagram post about this pattern, I would cut this down to a one by one to make it appropriate for Instagram. If I wanted to cut it down to uh, have it be one of the photographs included in the actual uh, pattern sales thing, I would actually just, I could also manipulate it to be here. And this is actually what I'm gonna use in my sewing tutorial video. So I just want a couple of really good photographs of this doll looking the very best that she can in this actual dress. So this was just a really quick run through about how you might could use uh, this um, program for your own benefit. And again, it's called Photo Scissors. So let me come back in just a moment, tell you a little bit more about it. Thank you guys so much for coming by today. I hope this information about photo scissors is helpful. If this is a software program that would be useful to you in your handmade sewing business, I strongly recommend that you at least try their demo and see how you like it. Um, I did decide to purchase the paid version and I think at the time that I got it, it was maybe $19.99 for a thousand pictures, which works out to about three cents a photo. That is a lot of time savings in my opinion and I find it to be a great product. So let me know what you think about it if you try it. List something in the comment section below or if you also use a similar type of product or have come across something that other people in this community could benefit from, please list that there as well too. As always, I encourage you to please like this video and subscribe and specifically ask questions if you have them. I'm more than happy to share the tips and techniques of things that I've learned over the past several decades selling online and to help you grow your own business as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video.